I don't know, but I can tell you that right now, there, it, gold is now in its 11th straight month of net outflows. Hello everyone, today our guest is Andy Schechtman, president and owner of Miles Franklin, Precious Metals. Andy Schechtman talks about the death of the dollar, where I see us taking over, the fatal problems in current financial system, the Fed's tobaccos, banking bailouts, and more. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know if it was systemic. My feeling is that it was not systemic uh, whatsoever. And I think obviously that they picked and, sh and chose that bank specifically for there being ulterior motives. And if, if, if it were systemic, they should at least be transparent in, in telling us how it was systemic and, and why they decided to bail out these banks and not bail out other banks. And, um, you know, m many of the things that they do it seemed to me just to, to make no sense where, you know, $5 billion to build a border wall to, to stop our children from dying of fentanyl and, and allowing 5 million people to enter this country illegally is not okay, but $114 billion to the Ukraine is, including pensions to their, to their government when there's a $1.75 trillion pension shortfall in this country. I don't understand the things that they're doing, and they're not transparent about it, and uh, they're divisive and they make very little of any sense, Mark, and this is being one of them. If you want to level with the public and say, you know, we're bailing out this bank because, then then level with the public and tell them. But for, for her to say, well, you know, I'll talk with the president, we'll figure it out. Well, that, that, all, that does is create, uh, all that does is create speculation and, and create a whole level of mistrust where you're going to see these these depositors across the, the country. I mean, I grew up in Minneapolis and you get 20 minutes outside of town and you're out into, the, out into the farms and out into the small rural areas that have relied upon these small banks for a very long time. And they know your family and they know your parents and they helped you build your small business, which in this country for a long time represented 40% of GDP. And now you have 5 million bucks in one of these banks. You've got to be thinking, what the hell am I going to do tomorrow? And, and that's why... Mark, in the past eight days, my company's done $85 million in sales. We did $800 million last year, which was our biggest year. We did this in one week. People are scared like I've never seen before, whether they're buying gold or throwing all their money into the handful of the big commercial banks. What she has done has created a run on all the regional banks. <clears throat> and with that being said, she owes it to the public to tell us why it was bailed out and, and why others won't be. And, and her answer to the to the representative of Oklahoma was ridiculous and, yeah. and certainly wasn't transparent. It's our relationship with Saudi Arabia that gives us the petrodollar status. And I think that was the day when it was crystallized in, in Saudi Arabia's mind that, that they don't trust us anymore. And then you look at the weaponizing of the dollar where the world reserve currency should not have the prerogative of saying, well, you can use it, but you can't. The rest of the world looks at us and say, well, this is a country that came in under the guise of weapons of mass destruction, destroyed Iraq, and then said, oops, we're sorry, and, and it's okay. But, you know, if, if you don't fall in line on the right side of what their agenda is, yes, you get sanctioned and, and you get your assets frozen. And if you look at what the European Union did, Mark, not only did they freeze and sanction the assets of the Russians, they've just told them they're now being confiscated and are going to be used to build the Ukraine. So when you talk about complete and total lack of trust, this is the rallying cry, in my opinion, that is that is creating this massive coalition of countries, whether it be on the Belt Road Initiative, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the BRICS nations, or the Eurasian Economic Union, which comprise, you know, 70, 80 percent of human population who have lost trust. We have squandered the good graces, not only of our foreign creditors, but of most of the international community, including our allies like Turkey, who formerly applied to the BRICS, like Saudi Arabia, who's formally applied to the BRICS, and now the most recent one being Mexico, I who has just <laughs> formally applied to the BRICS. The BRICS nations have told us they're going to issue a reserve currency peg to commodities. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization is talking about a new settlement currency for the entire Eurasian landmass backed by gold. 
And if you go back to April of 2019, the Bank of International Settlements reclassified gold as a high quality liquid asset, basically tier one, the only other one in the world. So all of these central banks who are massively accumulating gold, the second most ever in 2022 since 1967, the most since 1967, the second most ever are allies like Turkey who bought more gold than any country on the planet last year, and again here in January. The central banks in January were 192% month over month from December. They're doubling down on their accumulation of real things that I truly do believe will be pegged to a new system. It is the rallying cry against the mistrust, against the hegemony, against the sanctions, against the bullying. That is the rallying cry that gets everyone to the table. But that in and of itself doesn't make it work, nor does the attempt of mutual cooperation and understanding between countries who have hated each other. But what does make it work is the pledging of commodities. And and I do believe they will use the rails of the Chinese digital yuan, which has already done north of $25 in settlements on the Belt Road Initiative, to which all 13 OPEC-producing countries are on. And they will use the success of that technology to show the veracity and the immutability of what every country is pledging to a new system. And Mark, as long as recent as a few years ago, these countries in and of themselves could not stand up to the West on a military basis or a GDP basis, but you put them all together and you got 80 plus percent of human population who is accumulating all of the commodities, who are working on deals of mutual beneficial um, uh, relationships and and agreements that are sidestepping the dollar, and you put them all together, and their military might is stronger, their GDPs are stronger, and if it's going to work, it will be transparent. As Zoltan Pozar says, we are entering Bretton Woods 3, a, a system dominated by, by commodities and, and, and transparency and truthfulness, and that is what I think they are attempting to do. So, you know, most times you would think about there's not a chance in hell this is going to happen, but I do believe that it will happen. And I do believe that the countries that are forging these alliances together against the Western perceived hypocrisy and hegemony will use commodities, and in particular gold, to backstop a new reserve currency, and they will use distributed ledger technology or a blockchain to show the veracity and the immutability of it. This is their one chance. And this is why you're seeing countries like Iran and Iraq put a railway between the two countries and why you're seeing countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran have embassies in each other's countries because this is their one shot to break free from the Western hegemony. All of these governments are accumulating the crap of it and they're using the same tricks that we did by shorting the COMEX and shorting the LBMA and and taking possession of it, shorting the prices on the exchanges and then gobbling up the physical and they'll paper over their exchanges. And we will wake up one day just like just like we woke up on a Sunday morning, on a Monday morning to see the chaos with the failures of the banks, we'll wake up to see that a market that is rehypothecated the way that the COMEX market is will blow up and price will then be set free. Or if Russia, who's going to issue the new Moscow exchange, decides to peg gold at 4,000 bucks an ounce and silver at 100 like that, everyone in the world will send everything over there to get that arbitrage and we will never get it back. The West has messed with the prices and for people not to see that is a mistake. And look, you know, the head trader for JP Morgan is going to prison for it. And, you know, maybe he's a token a sacrificial lamb, if you will. But as far as I'm concerned, 100% the West has suppressed the price of gold because of Gibson's paradox, because of the fact they all decided to suppress interest rates because what that will do is create an illusion of prosperity in stocks, in bonds, and in real estate. And now we're going to pay the price for it because our foes are accumulating it against us. Um, I mean, do you think this takes months years, decades, like uh, at the, at, if we were to sustain this current pace of gold buying by the BRICS nations, et cetera, I mean, how, how fast do you think that could happen? I don't know, but I can tell you that right now, there, it, gold is now in its 11th straight month of net outflows leaving the COMEX. Uh, so far, I looked uh, last week and they were at 285,000 ounces had left m- so far in the month of March. And in silver, month to date, over 3.5 million ounces of silver have left outflows, leaving the COMEX. And when it leaves, it ain't ever coming back because these are thousand ounce bars that 
you know, they're going eastward. They're leaving. And if you do anything too fast, you cut off your nose to spite your face. Yeah. They're so, trying to bleed as much as they can out of the uh, out of the turnip, squeeze as much juice out of it as they possibly can until it withers and dies. And that's when the jig is up. And that's why they're doing it slowly and using the Western suppression against them. Yeah. So if that was, and, you know, you have to ask yourself when you look at the silver market on Comex, why is it the most heavily concentrated short position of any commodity ever traded ever on the Comex? Why? What? What would possess anyone? these commercial banks to short silver to that degree and platinum and gold, why? And, and the fact that they are, and, and yet we see massive accumulation by the central banks and drawdowns from the exchanges that betrays the rhetoric and betrays the price and it shines a light on the fact that they can short the paper price, accumulate the physical and then paper it all over and they're sitting filled with the real thing and they did it all by gaming the system. And we showed them how to do it. And this is exactly why, for all of these years, the Western banks suppressed the price of gold to maintain an illusion of strength and prosperity by keeping interest rates low and juicing the system and creating distortions in asset prices. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Andy Sheckman. If you enjoyed this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.